I remember seeing a graph several years ago. I'll try to find the image and put it up here on the screen, but basically the gist is that as you, you, you start on a project, you kind of start in and you're going up with in, increasing confidence. Your x-axis is kind of your knowledge, your time that you spent on something, and your y-axis is essentially your confidence. And in the very early stages of a project or something you're working on, your confidence kind of goes up. It kind of hits a peak pretty early on. And then immediately after that, as you keep going, you hit this really low kind of valley in a way. And then you start on that upward trajectory again. And I find this really graph really to be useful and valuable because it kind of assures me that the challenges that you work through, or the, the issues that you deal with when you try to solve really challenging and complex problems in a product space, um, they're, they're not just you. There are they're other people that deal with these problems as well. And man, have I been dealing with that valley this week. One of the things that I've been talking about a lot recently is, is a patient encounter. Um, designing an electronic medical records patient encounter and designing a patient encounter for Healthcare OS. You know, when a, when a physician meets with a patient, how do they kind of flow through this process of analyzing data meeting with the patient and gathering information, making decisions, and then moving on from that patient to finish their chart, to finish prescribing or ordering, and then going on to the next patient to do it all over again. It's this kind of cyclical process that a physician does. So as I've been tackling this problem with this physician encounter or this patient encounter and like this process of intake, uh, particularly in the intake process, um, the, the deeper you get, the more complexity that you uncover. But as I've gotten really deep into this stuff, as I continue to work through it and kind of think about it, um, and as I like just work on it nearly every day, there's just more and more that reveals itself. There's more and more that kind of continues to show itself and it kind of continues to rear its ugly head in terms of complexity, in terms of features and requirements and all this kind of stuff. Um, in terms of like, how do I, how does a user flow through and add things? And then how do they delete things? Or do they, can they even add things? Like there's all these challenges that are, uh, that keep coming up inside of this. And this is all compounded by the fact that I'm not a physician. So I don't necessarily know the proper terms to use. I don't know necessarily the proper, like, like it could be this term. This is what other people call it, but it could it might make more sense to be this term. Like I don't necessarily have that intuitive knowledge. Um, and so it's, it, it's actually been quite challenging to work through some of these, these issues. I don't know where I'm going with this today. Like I don't necessarily have like a particular like idea for you today. Um, but one thing that I want to maybe just encourage you on, because if you're out there and you're thinking about starting something or you're thinking about trying to make something, you're going to hit that too. You're going to hit, you're going to get this confidence and you're going to go through that valley. And I found it to be kind of a, a process. It's also cyclical. Everything is cyclical, I guess, where you, you're, you're get, you get this huge amount of confidence and excitement and, and just energy. And then you kind of dip and you're kind of like, crap, like, how am I doing this? How does it work? What am I even doing here? Should I be doing this? Like all these things, uh, that, that rear its, their head and and they most of these things are, are narratives that are trying to tell us like we are not worth that or that we are not capable of that and those things I think we need to be mindful of where they come from because they may or may not be true they might be distortions that that are trying to kind of keep us from fulfilling maybe something that we really truly want to do I guess I just want you to know that you're not the only one who deals with it, right? Like I'm not the only one who deals with it and that other people do experience this so much so that we have entire books and, and courses and, and things that help us navigate it. With that being said, I do think that there are some things, particularly as a designer or somebody who might be building a product that you can do and the things that I'm looking forward to doing um, in the coming days and weeks that I think will be very useful and can be helpful. 
The first one, the first idea is to lean on experts that are around you. So if you're not an expert in a field, but you have a deep passion to solve a problem in a field, find some experts, these advisors that you can lean on to ask the dumb questions. Um, in lieu of that, Google is your friend. Google to find, you know, the, the, the leading industry newspaper or magazine or <laughs> newspaper blog or whatever it is, or even a YouTube channel to learn the terminology and, and all of that kind of stuff. Like that's a really valuable way of, of finding research. And so don't ever be afraid to Google. I can't tell you the number of times when I'm looking at vital signs this week, which is a really weird one. Seems like it should be pretty straightforward. I can't tell you the number of times I've Googled what vital signs are and like which vital signs are important because there are so many. There are so many that could be there. And even things like um, respiratory rate, which I hadn't been including, but is actually pretty important. And I'm sitting here going, what is the unit for respiratory rate? Like, you know, we have pounds or kilograms for weight. We have, you know, inches or centimeters for height, but respiratory rate, what is the unit of measure? And it's just breaths per minute. And I found that out just through Googling respiratory rate unit. And it's just a bunch of images that show breaths per minute. And I was like, surely that can't be it. Surely it can't be as simple as that. And it was. Um, and this actually kind of ladders into my second point, which is to actively involve potential users who in my case are the same experts, but may not be for, for whatever you might be working on. But for me, they're the same experts. And so I have a little bit of this kind of double-edged sword, or I guess, um, maybe like, it's almost like a double helpline in a way where I not only can test with someone who's actually going to be using the software, but then I can ask them the dumb questions and say like, does breaths per minute actually make sense for rep respiratory rate? I still don't know. As of recording this, I still don't know. But testing with users, putting it in front of users to get their feedback and their reactions is really important. I'm going to be doing that. I was actually supposed to do it for today, and that was actually going to be this this video <laughs> that you're watching. It was actually supposed to be that, and unfortunately, um, I had to postpone it uh, due to unforeseen circumstances. So, like, I'm uh, that has yet to come. But I'm looking forward to that because that's going to help me not only like see what's working, what's not working, because it's so easy to get inside your head, but also to be able to understand where can we make improvements here and where can we maybe even make things better than they are. Uh, you know, for me, looking at electronic health records, I, I looked at Epic a lot. I looked at Epic almost always for like, what is best, best practice? So if this leads me a lot down lots of YouTube rabbit holes and screenshot rabbit holes and things. And a lot of it is intelligible, but a lot of it is also unintelligible. And so I'm sitting here going, well, Epic's doing it this way, but is that really necessary? Um, you know, one thing that they do is they they mark, uh, they, they force the user to click a button that says mark reviewed um, in terms of when you like input something in like medical history, or I guess after you've looked at the medical history, like saying like, I have reviewed this with the patient and everything's up to date. I'm like, well, could we not just make the assumption, and, and maybe we can, maybe we can't, this is something to find out, but maybe we could just make the assumption that, hey, if I'm marking this as reviewed, or if I'm moving on, then can we not then just assume that I have marked it as reviewed? And, and that's a slippery slope for sure in terms of like, you know, regulatory and kind of uh, legal uh, kind of oversight. Um, but does it have to be another click, right? Does it have to be another thing that you have to do? So that's a good option. And this is where user testing can be really helpful because then I can ask those questions and we can talk about it. We can talk about what's working, what's not, and where maybe potential options for innovation might lie. And this third thing that I would recommend or that I, that I think is really valuable is uh, being able to take a bit of a break every now and then. If it's not necessarily a break in terms of your uh, you know, if it's not like completely taking a break, it might be not focusing on this particular problem for a little while. Um, so for this, for me, patient encounter work, you know, one thing I've also started doing is thinking about like other screens in the experience, um, just kind of in even like inside my uh, design files, like just doing general cleanup. So like removing things that aren't relevant anymore, converting all the color codes to be the same codes, um, cleaning up styling so it's all consistent in different places. Like those types of tasks is kind of like menial kind of administrative 
maybe somewhat mindless tasks can be really helpful to uh, potentially help to get your brain off of that and like kind of unstuck yourself. Um, I'm also a big proponent of taking like a physical break of just not working at all. Um, but in the case where, you know, hey, like I'm stuck on this problem, you're kind of hitting that wall, you're in that valley, then maybe think about another problem, think about another challenge, or just set it down for a while altogether and give yourself some of that grace that, hey, we don't necessarily have to figure this all out right now in this moment. This is a long journey, not a sprint. This is a marathon, not a sprint. We're not trying to figure it all out in three weeks. We're trying to figure it out in the next 10 or 15 years. Uh, and I think that's really important as well. Yeah, I just think it's really important because I know that if I'm if I'm struggling with this, it's I'm sure there are other people out there struggling with it. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm excited. I'm gonna not be having a video next week. I'll be out of town doing some traveling, um, but you should look for a video, I think the week after that, in more depth about some feedback and user testing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.